hey what's up guys this is Akshay from AS learning and today we're gonna see about the top libraries which you which you should learn to become good into NLP as we all know that NLP has become an integral part of machine learning and deep learning if you go for a job if you go for getting a job into data science data analytics or, or in the field of artificial in intelligence NLP is not now an optional skill set but it's a must skill set most of the problems in all the major companies revolve around NLP or computer vision and that's why NLP has become a very, very important skill set to have to become a good data scientist. And if you want to become good into NLP, you must be good into these libraries, which we are going to be discussing. So for discussing the libraries and the first library, which I'll be picking will be NLTK. So NLTK stands for Natural Language Toolkit. It is one of the first libraries to be introduced for for NLP tasks. It has around 50 corpuses and lexical resources. It has a huge word net, simple simplicity and all the basic pre-processing activities like lemmatization, stemming, chunking, parts of speech, then name entity recognition and all. All these basic operations you can do into NLTK. I highly recommend you for e using NLTK for doing all your NLP pre-processing activities. Then the other library which I'll be jumping to would be Gensim. Gensim is today's library, I'll say. Gensim has some very powerful algorithms and this library is memory independent. And that's that it gives this library an edge for performing multi-core algorithms and be memory efficient. Some of the most powerful al algorithms which are used in topic modeling, document indexing, and uh, semantic similarity and document similarity like LSA, then LDA, then random projections, then uh, hierarchical, territorial allocation, all these algorithms are a part of Gensim. And if you want to solve any topic modeling or uh, any uh, document similarity kind of a problem, just blindly go with Gensim. Okay, then the other library which we will be discussing will be Core NLP. Core NLP, the maintainer of this library is Stanford and uh, all the basic operations which you can perform into NLTK can be done here also. One of the disadvantages we have for using Core NLP is that you need to have Java installed on your system. Then uh, this library is available into four languages mainly Arabic, Chinese, English, and French. Okay, so, so next library, which we will be discussing after core NLP will be Spacey. Spacey is one of my favorite libraries when it comes to name entity recognition, summarization kind of a stuff. It is highly built for production activities. So if you want to build a robust code for your production environment, I highly recommend you go with Spacey and it also supports 49 different languages then the other library which we're going to be discussing will be text blob one of the thing which i love ab about text blob is the knowledge base sentiment analyzer sentiment analyzer it has i have not seen any uh, another library which has a knowledge based sentiment analyzer all the other libraries have some neural network kind of a stuff there which does sentiment detection but one of the cool things i love about text blob is its knowledge based sentiment analyzer there's an another video which i have made regarding how internally sentiment analysis of text blob works you uh, you can check that video in in the link below apart from that you also get an api for doing all the basic activities like speech tagging extraction then chunking parts of speech and all okay then the other library which we're gonna be discussing will be Pattern3. So Pattern is highly used for web mining and uh, it has it gives some web services revolving around Google, Twitter, Wikipedia, web crawler, and HTML DOM parser. So if you are, so if your task revolves around data mining and web mining, I recommend you go with Pattern. And last but not least is PYNLPL or you can also call it pineapple so one of the major advantage with which pineapple has is regarding it's working with folia xml folia stands for format for linguistic annotation and this is just one of the few libraries which deals with this problem 
Apart from that, you also get the basic features which the, uh, which the other libraries give. So that's it with this guys. If you're aiming to be good into NLP, just master these libraries and this will be more than enough to get you a very good hold on the field of natural language processing. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with all your machine learning, deep learning and Python friends. Do check our other videos on, on artificial intelligence and keep spreading love. Take care. Peace out.